Hey everybody, this is Kevin Sampson of Picture Lock. On the line with me right now, I have Russell Max Simon. He's the writer and producer of District Land. Russell, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Kevin. No problem. So, uh, District Land is going to be playing at DC Independent Film Festival uh, opening night, correct? Opening night, March 4th, that's right. All right, can you give us a, give the audience a description of what District Land is all about? District Land is about five young people living in D.C. It's uh, it's like shows about young people, but it's, it's set right here in the district. So it shows that side of the city that you don't see in all those other shows that are about D.C., House of Cards. You know, it's, um, it's a D.C. show, but it's about the young people, not the president or the vice president. Yeah, I, and I find, I find that interesting. Um, how did you come up with that idea? <laughs> well, you know, it is based off of a play by Christina Bejan. The play was at Capitol Fringe Festival in 2014. And when I first heard a table read of the play, I thought, you know, that Christina had really put her finger on something that I had never seen on TV before. You know, like I said, all the shows about D.C. are basically about, you know, Congress or the president. And I thought D.C. was more interesting than that. You know, I thought it was interesting that a lot of young people come here from around the country and, uh, you know, try to make change or try to do something with their lives or their careers. And they're growing up and doing all those sorts of things that young people do growing up. But they're also going to work on the Hill and going to work at prestigious think tanks and all the rest of it. So I always thought that that was a very interesting part of D.C. that I hadn't seen anywhere before. And when I saw Christina's play, uh, I was very interested in it. So the show is based off of her play. Okay. Um, and right now it's a pilot for um, a web series, correct? Yeah, we made the pilot episode and we have five more episodes written. And the idea is to uh, you know, get funding to keep making the show and keep telling the stories about these people. One of the things that I find uh, interesting about web series and just online media in general is, you know, you have that binge factor. But one of the things you have to do is you have to uh, develop the characters quickly. And I think um, with your characters, you can, right off the bat, you know who is who, uh, um, what kind of makes up their personality. So could you talk a little bit about writing those characters and even your actresses, because I think they do a great job. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I think they're all fantastic actors, and I'm, I was super happy with the people I was able to bring in. But yeah, TV is, you know, they say movies are all about story, and TV is really about the characters. If you don't like them or, or want to see what happens to them uh, more especially, then you won't keep watching. So it's, I think it's a, a good cross-section of what you'll see in sort of the young DC professional world. The main character is Maria. She's this Cuban American, first generation um, Rhodes Scholar who works at a think tank. And the first episode is really about you know her life plan, which she has very structured and, and thought out, uh, beginning to crumble. You want to hear about the other characters too? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, please. <laughs> the uh, you know Catherine. Um, we got someone who works at a think at a, at a uh, a consulting firm called Cruz Ashton Minnick, a, a fictional consulting firm, real ass kicker type A. Uh, Dave, uh, played by Brendan Wedner, is an unemployed Georgetown law grad. Uh, you know, sleeps in a lot, uh, plays the Tinder game a lot, uh, but also organizes uh, something called the Progressive Leadership Network, and that mostly consists of a bunch of DC happy hours. Uh, you got uh, Charity, who's played by Kaylin Dickinson, and she uh, she's sort of a nonprofit. You know, they might call her a wage drone. Not not the happiest in her job in the world, but uh, she also organizes the Poetry Slam, that is the big uh, last scene of the pilot episode. And finally, you've got um, Frank, who's actually the only one who works on the Hill. Uh, those are the five housemates, and then there's a sixth character. Uh, Aisha, who's played by Robin Freeman, who you'll see doing the slam poetry in the uh, in the trailer, which a lot of people have seen. And she's a DC native and um, comes into a few of the different housemates' lives and challenges them on a number of things. Yeah, so I think one of the things about the series, it's obvious that um, 
uh, it's no small production, right? You have so <laughs> many extras, uh, whether they're in the bars. I really liked how the different locations and settings um, that are definitely around in DC, um, making it feel really real, um, like you're there with the group. So uh, as you said, you know, you're trying to raise money for um, to, to, to shoot more. You already have some written. Um, can you just talk a little bit about what it takes to produce a show like District Land? Yeah, this was quite a production. You know, we had 50, 60 extras all together, um, a crew of about 10 or 12 people. We had a uh, an Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign to pay for part of it and some producers, including myself, who paid for the other part of it. So it's not an easy or a cheap production, but we did have, as you said, some really great locations. We, we shot at the Coop in Columbia Heights, and the owner there was very, very gracious, allowing us to shoot there. We also shot at Clyde's, our restaurant, the one in Gallery Place, Chinatown. Um, the manager there was very gracious. So as the show goes on and as we do more episodes, what I'm hoping is that you know, the business community of D.C. will, will jump on this as an opportunity to, to, to show the city in a, in a way that it, it hasn't been shown anywhere else. Maybe come help us with locations, help us with sponsorships and that sort of thing. It is quite a big production. It's not just, you know, a guy on a camera following people around the street. So um, it, it, a lot went into it. Yeah, most definitely. Um... So folks at home, <laughs> you definitely want to support District Land, uh, make this thing happen. Again, DC is more than, as Russell said, uh, just the president or uh, government. All right, so uh, Russell, one of the things I think uh, in regard to actually exhibiting your work, DC Independent Film Festival, what does that mean to you to have uh, the film selected and, and playing opening night? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, DCAFF has been great. Um, they have been around for a long time, and they have put together a really extraordinary premiere event for opening night. Um, you know, the executive director, uh, Deirdre Pritchett, wants to support uh, local filmmakers, and, and I'm one of them that she's said, you know, let's get behind Russell's show. And, uh, and the event that they're putting on is fantastic. The band whose music is featured in the show is going to play a set there. So nice. everyone will get to hear these quiet colors play. You'll get to see the pilot episode, and, and then you'll get to see a reading from an upcoming episode with all the actors and a Q&A. So, and it's in Eastern, it's in Eastern Market at uh, Miracle Theater, which is a beautiful, beautiful theater I was just visiting the other day. So I'm really ha happy they're, they're working with us on it. Wow. I mean, that, sound, that sounds awesome. Uh, I mean, you're not only going to be able to see uh, the series, but they'll be able to hear the readings and everything. I mean, I think that's definitely something that we should get behind and support. All right, Russell, yeah. how can people actually see the pilot? Well, right now, the only way to see the pilot is to come to the premiere event on March 4th. So if you go on DC uh, Independent Film Festival's website, uh, you'll see that you can buy tickets there. After that, it'll show at a couple other festivals, and uh, you know, hopefully, eventually, it will be released. Um, but right now, if you want to see it, come come visit us at the premiere March fourth. Nice, always the producer. You want to <laughs> see it, <laughs> but but no, uh, it, it gets a picture lock uh, cosign. Um, definitely an interesting, and I think what I what I enjoyed about it most is that it does what a web series should do. It introduces the characters, but I felt like I wanted to see more. I knew it wasn't over, obviously, but it was kind of like, oh, I, I wouldn't mind investing some time actually seeing these characters develop. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Russell, well, thanks for your time. Good luck at the festival and good luck with the pilot. Thanks, Kevin. Good talking to you again. As always. All right, take care.